Welcome back everyone to another Flyball and Friends video. Hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe. And without further ado, here's my new guest, Craig. All right, so uh, how are you, Craig? Good, good. The weather's Surviving. good down there? Surviving. <laughs> Training the dogs in the backyard now because we've got no place to train, so. Yeah, fair enough. You know. uh, so, so tell me it. about yourself. Um, well, I was born in England. Moved to Canada when I was five and lived in Canada most of my life, then came down here about 15 years ago to Monroe, Michigan. Nice. Uh, living down here now, so. Cool. We have a nice farm down here with lots of land around, so. Jealous. Um, I honestly have a basically football sized field out back for training now that I made. Uh, me and my wife's uncle made it, and so I got a frisbee field, an agility field, uh, I can throw fly ball lanes down out there. I just wish I had a big enough barn to do fly ball, but yeah, that's one thing we don't have. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, what team do you got? Do you play on? Right now, I run with Slammers. Um, they're basically, if you look at teams playing, they're one of the top hundred original ones. So nice. I know that. So I started off uh, in Canada on a team called Fast Track years ago. Um, sort of got me into the sport and that. And, Played on a few teams over the years, made my own team once, and uh, that team's still running up in Canada, so. Awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, how many dogs do you have? <laughs> you want me to be honest? <laughs> uh, right <laughs> <Your> now, <laughs> we have 17. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And, uh, and how many are racing all... and how many are non-racing? Well, everyone has raced. Yeah. Uh, we just got our retired ones now. Uh, right now, to be honest, we only have, I think, couple that are retired uh, but then we have um, three puppies that are not racing yet they could be there two of them are a year old we just can't get them in the lanes right now yeah um, so and then we have one younger puppy that's eight months old that's not ready yet so cool how long yeah. have you been playing for oh well over 25 years now that's a long time yeah I've been uh, been around a long time from the old when we used to hand time the uh, everything and the judge used to do the hand signals for the start and all that before lights and everything so. <laughs> that's before my time even yeah the first tournament i ever went to was in a barn with hay and was i didn't go to it i went to meet a breeder there and that's how i uh, sort of looked into the sport because i met her there she was from northern ontario and she was coming down to richmond hill and by toronto and so i went to the tournament to meet her because it was just closer and that's my first time I ever saw fly ball, and it was in a barn back in the day, and we sat on hay, ba uh, hay bales and stuff like that with it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what got you into the sport, hey? Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm a competitive person by heart. I love playing team sports. I always played team sports growing up. So, you know, when I was getting, uh, you know, in my 20s, late 20s, and that, I decided, hey, I still want to compete and do something. But I sort of started coaching my dogs. Fair enough. And what do you do for a living? I'm a full-time dog trainer. Awesome. I, uh, I've been training now for, I said, about 20 years, 25 years training. Um, I honestly run uh, basically Southeast Michigan PetSmart training program. Okay. Um, I train their trainers for them and do that. Um, you know, plus I train classes. Uh, I have a very busy store when it was going and you know, I used to do 25 classes between Monday and Thursday and train dogs and that, so. Wow, busy oh, yeah. guy. Always. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you play NASMA or you fly with Slammers? Uh, well, Slammers itself plays both, you fly and NAFA. Okay. Uh, I just strictly play with you fly now myself. Fair enough. Just personal reasons, I like That's it. That's cool. So. Uh, but I did race most of my years with NAF. I remember that. I started <laughs> off with NAF and all that. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, how long has NAF, or you fly been around for now? Oh, geez. Uh, 2004, I think it is. Okay. So, so still quite a while. Around. Yeah, I went to the first uh, U Fly Championships down in Dallas. Um, took the camper and the kids down there, and the kids were like, I mean, young, two years old or something like yeah. that when they went down. So. So yeah, it's over 10 years now. Cool. Do you travel lots with Flyball or do you just mostly do local stuff? Uh, not as much as I used to do. Okay. Uh, back in the day, especially when you didn't have kids, it was a lot easier to travel with it and do it. 
But I mean, we still go to St. Louis and Ohio and, you know, other places around in that. Um, like I said, I'd, it, I'd love to go all over, but, you know, always depends on money and time and stuff yeah. like that, but you have to do it, so. Yeah. What's the farthest you've been for Flyball? Oh, Vegas. Okay. I think Vegas or Dallas is probably the two bigger, the furthest ones I've gone. Yeah, how far is that for you? Oh, Vegas has to be 26 hours. Ooh, yeah, that's a long drive. So, yeah. You know, cool. So, yeah, but it was fun. Um, is there any place that you would just absolutely love to go, whether it's to watch, compete, or oh, train even? I'd love to go to the Crufts over in England. I, I would love to do that. Just I, I like that spectator out in the middle. Uh, that, that'd that be just a fun place, it looks like, to go and see, even just to watch the racing and that in person and that. So. Yeah, yeah, they definitely yeah. build a lot of hype around Crufts, and it's definitely a huge yeah. thing on uh, the internet for it, so it's it's exactly. awesome to see. Yeah. Uh, have you done any seminars, or do you host any seminars? I used to, uh, back in the day, probably before the kids and that. We haven't done them since we had the kids and that. That took a lot okay. of time. So. But yeah, I used to do uh, seminars all around Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan area, and then I used to do seminars back then. Cool. So, yeah. But like I said, it, when you have kids and fly, fly ball, <laughs> It takes away a lot, so. It does, it definitely does. Uh, what do you like about playing fly ball? Uh, the people. I, I like meeting the people. I'm a very social person, you know that. You met me through fly ball. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, going to the big events or seeing the people, I've met so many good friends, family and stuff like that through fly ball. Um, you know, we all have things in common like the dogs and doing stuff, and but they're just good people. You know, most of the people in the sport are very good people. They're willing to help you and help out. You go to tournaments and if you're short, you know, you got someone who's going to come and help you out when you need to. So, you know, it, it is. I, I, competitive wise, yes, I love to race. I, I think I'm getting older now where I'm just not as competitive as I used to be. But uh, I like that part too. But I think it's more the people. Fair enough. Just seeing and playing with everybody and, you know, going to like uh, the championships. Even with uh, NAP, I don't race it. I, I have gone down to the Can-Am to watch, and I've even gone to the Can-Am to judge. And it was more or less just to go down there and see the people that I haven't seen in years and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Is there any team out there that you love to race against? <laughs> sure shots. <laughs> My friends from Texas, I got you got to love that team. They're such a fun team to play against and race against. The last few years at the UFLY uh, Championships, we've been in the same division so and every time it's gone down to five races and we're just it doesn't matter who won at the end it's just really really fun racing them um you know but then you know i do like to race some of the top teams from canada and around and that i i you get you get sort of down here you know stuck in that michigan group there you race a lot of brood dogs and mighty muds and Bob busters which are all fun teams to race against but you race them every tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The new teams easy. always give it that extra. Exactly. You know, you get to go see them and have fun. So yeah. So sure shots would probably be the one I like to see. I like to awesome. see. Awesome. So. Cool. If you're um, lucky, is there? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I said if you look at some of their pictures, I, I do a lot of photo bombing on their pictures. On. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's good. Is there anything in flyball that you miss that we used to do? Um. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't think it's as... It used to be a lot more social after yeah. racing. I, I, I find that social part has broken up a little bit. Now, you do get a lot of tournaments that still have, you know, let's have a big buffet after everyone meet. And I know RPM used to do it still. Uh, you know, I, I like that. Because you, you want to not just suddenly everyone just breaks off and goes their own way at the end. Especially when you're camping and that. It's fun to be around all the people and sort of socialize it don't see it as much because I think the smaller teams that, that don't camp or don't aren't around the sites a lot you see them just break off and go yeah do you know what I mean so I, yeah. I, I guess I miss that I, I miss more of the after party it's life of doing it and seeing people in that so yeah definitely those but after the racing were, I, they the were racing, a big I think thing yeah the, the racing um, has improved uh, the safety of the sport and that so there's a lot of things that have come in really well with the sport to build it up to be safer for the dogs to compete 
and stuff like that. But, awesome. Um, in the lanes? No, I think it's got better in the lanes more than anything I missed out on that one. So. That's good. Good, good, good. Um, favorite memory of Flyball, whether it's on or off the racing lanes? I can tell you some funny ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the years I've been doing, I think one of my favorite ones, one of the funniest ones was um, we were, I was racing um, with a team I won't mention, but we broke the multi-world record and ran under 16 seconds for the first team to ever do it. Wow. My little, wow. Uh, my little height dog, Smack, my border jack was on it. And we're all excited and we knew we did it. We knew we saw the times come up and our line guy decided he wants to celebrate and run across to see us and celebrate. Well, the problem was the other team hadn't finished. <laughs> so he ran into their lane, interfered with them. We lost the heat because he interfered. <laughs> and it is just funny because, you know, it was like, oh, well, you know, nothing they could do. We did it. Our mistake. Yeah. Uh, we honestly duct taped his feet down for the next race. <laughs> uh, we, honest, uh, we did it again that day and broke under 16 seconds with the multi-team, which, you know, multi-teams, uh, I think that's one thing that's losing out in the sport is the multi-racing yeah. and that and yeah, I variety agree. racing. Um, and I love doing the multi and that. So that, that's one of my sort of fun memories, good memories and that. Um, other memories, uh, doing the Incredible Dog Challenge. Mm, uh, yeah. doing, the great, doing the great outdoor games in Lake Placid was incredible. Um, conditions were never great for us, but I mean, <laughs> doing these big events, and these, these are way before your time in that, it's like, they don't have them as much anymore. I know uh, Incredible Dog Challenge brought Flyball back, but yeah, I heard there's yeah. a lot of issues with it again. Um, you know, it, it's hard when you're running outdoors yeah. with the dogs. I, I know a lot of teams from the south do a lot of outdoor tournaments, but you look, look north of Indiana and that, and north this way, you don't see many outdoor tournaments. It's usually indoors on that, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, things like that. I, I love doing them things, so. Awesome. Uh, what about one of your earliest memories of Flyball? Oh, uh, I can go back. Um, went to a tournament. It was the uh, first year after I'd started racing. And this is when you didn't have many winter tournaments. So it yeah. was more hit the spring, summer, end of fall. Um, and I came back uh, with one of my little, my border collie Haley at the time. And uh, I worked on her box turn over the winter. And she went from a four or five dog to coming back starting the next year, running three eights, three nines. Awesome. Back then, three eights, three nines back 25 years ago. That was ago, fast. That and, was uh, fast. But yeah, I think that, that was just a great memory of when I started and that building it up, so. Awesome. Uh, any personal goals for you playing the sport? Now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You asked me that 15 years ago, it would have been a lot different. It would have been a lot different, yeah. You know what? I, I just want close competitive racing, having fun, no one getting hurt, being safer with the dogs. Um, you know, I always, you know, work my dogs. You've seen my dogs. I work them hard. Yeah. Uh, I build them up and train them well. Um, it, it's... There's no real personal goals as much anymore. I'm not a points freak. So, yes, I, I think one thing I want to do is hit 14 seconds with a team. And okay. we've come close. You know, we've ran a ton of 15 ones and 15 O's and stuff like that. But I think it's hitting that 14, se uh, you know, under 15 seconds at 14 seconds. I, I hear you. I think you. that's probably my last goal I have right now in fly ball. Uh, like I said, I don't care about the ribbons and the plaques. The dogs don't care about it. It's, <laughs> you know, we, we've always said over the years, the dog's not as... The sport's not as much for the dog. You can play with your dog out back. They're going to have as much fun. Yeah. The sport is about you and the dog working together as a team and doing stuff. So it's a lot about us doing the sport. So I think my goal, like, if I could one time, is to hit under 15 seconds. Awesome. A lot of teams awesome. have done it now, but it's not as easy as people think, especially when you, you know, you see a team do it once and they're like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's those. Not that easy. I feel those second barriers are really tough. So breaking into the 15s and breaking into the 16s back yes. in the day were the big things, and now it's definitely the 14s. As soon as you get into that 15-0, it seems like it's the hardest thing to do to just get that little tenth of a second yeah. off to get you in there. And I've had the lineups to do it. It's just that we just haven't hit it at the same time. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's hard for me right now because I've honestly got three of the dogs, of my dogs, on my A-team. Yeah. So it makes it hard because I can't run all my dogs. My dogs do perform better when I handle them. Come on, so you're that talented. Hand. 
What's that? You're that talented. <laughs> I could see you doing it. <laughs> yeah, they don't allow that anymore, I don't think. Um, there was a guy back in the day who had shepherds. He just lined them up and called one down to go each time. But yeah. that was way, way ago. But um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard because, you know, I'd like my other team, you know, to have other dogs on there than just my group. Uh, yeah. You know, I've got a lot of them on there. Um, you know, so it's building it. Yeah. You know, my some of my faster dogs now, Detox and XL, they're getting older. X is eight years old now. She still pulls off three sixes at tournaments. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And I got D is young. D's got a lot of work still in her and a lot of time. But I got Habit, my puppy, uh, my younger dog. Um, I got my new one issue now, who I have had, uh, I had high hopes. She got hurt when she was young as a puppy. Yeah. To be honest, I got paralyzed in her back leg. She got run into in the yard by a dog, just a freak accident. Um, she's coming back. She's doing great at Frisbee, my other sports and stuff like that. Thank you, brother. But uh, I just haven't, she was doing great in the lanes and practice and racing head to head. Um, problem is, can't get out there now. We've been basically off for about two and a half months of practice. Yeah. So yeah. That affects the young dogs if you don't get them consistently going and running. So. Yeah. Yeah. All the dogs have exercise now, but we lack practice. Exactly. <laughs> well, they're in great <laughs> shape. I mean, yeah. Take them out every day, do frisbee and agility and whatever I can do out back with them. Yeah. Uh, the pond will be open soon because it's warming up now. So. Do you have Get any other proud out. memories during your racing career? I, I I think the first time I ever got one of my dogs to run under 3.5 when Exile hit uh, uh, 347 racing. And yeah, that was incredible. Uh, you know. People don't, uh, a lot of new people in the sport don't realize that a, a 3.5 dog is not normal <laughs> Yeah. when you go back 20 years. Yeah. If your dog's hitting close to four seconds, it was great. But now, you know, and I think it was when, you know, I think she was about two years old when she hit 3.48, uh, 3.47. And, you know, then I got Detox who hit a 3.45. So uh, it, it's, I think, their proud moments, seeing all the work you do put into it and that you build up to get that point with your dogs and that. So. Yeah, very true, very true. But then I also, proud moments are like my wife's deaf dog that races, you know, getting her to race and do it. I mean, we took our two slowest dogs to uh, the U-Fly Championships, put them in pairs last year, and they won. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they were well-trained. They were, one has a neurological head tilt, the other one was deaf. The thing is, they completed. Yeah. It didn't make mistakes, and we ended up winning, uh, winning the championship with it with pairs on there. They're in their division, so well you know, done, proud bro. moments like that are great to see. Yeah. It's not yeah. about speed all the time; it's about consistency and doing that. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, what hobbies do you have that aren't playing fly ball? Oh, you know me; I do nothing. <laughs> else. <laughs> as in dog sports, or is it anything? Anything you want doesn't matter. Um. Well, dogs, I do all dog sports. Uh, yeah. I compete in dock diving. I compete in disc. Uh, I honestly, I have never been an agility person, just haven't. But now I've got a lot of time off. I'm working my puppy and starting her in agility, um, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I love disc. I love dock diving. Dock diving, I got into a few years ago by a fluke. Someone said, oh, you should take her and try and dock dive her because I was doing Frisbee and she jumped 23, uh, 20 feet off my back doing disc. And I said, you ever tried dock diving? I said, no. And a couple of weeks later, I took her to the pool, got her swimming. A couple of weeks after that, I brought her to a show and she jumped eight, 28 feet. And everyone's looking at me like, <laughs> how long have you been doing this? I said, I just started. Why? <laughs> so, yeah. And then I ended up, you know, that backstory with I won the Incredible Dog Challenge with detox and dock diving when she almost hit 33 feet. So That's awesome. Pretty yeah. That It's fun. I, I love most of my life is the sports and doing the dog stuff. I love being and working my dogs. Outside of that, yes, I love fishing and camping and stuff like that too. So, outdoors. Cool. <laughs> Do your kids play fly ball? They did. <laughs> when, when we forced them to, they did. Um, they hit When they hit teenagehood, I think it changed a little bit. They got their own things and we're not going to push them to do anything that they don't want to do. Yeah. Um, they put the dogs in that. Um, but yeah, my son right now is working on two motorbikes he's building. He's 15 years old and building two motorbikes and a car in the barn. Awesome. He loves doing the mechanical stuff and that. So, so yeah, they don't, Taylor, my daughter still plays a little bit and she comes out, but 
I don't think they're into it like the old people were, the, the way we started in that. So, um, you know, so it's up to them. Hopefully they'll get back into it later on. But, yeah, they're in high school. They're doing their teen stuff. So, yeah, not pushing them for it. So <laughs> fair enough. Okay. Well, that's all I have, Craig, on my list of uh, questions to ask you. Um, I just want to thank you for actually coming on here and doing this with me. Uh, and I'm so glad that uh, you were able to answer all my questions. Like, awesome. There's great uh, things in here. Is there anything else, though, that you would recommend to anyone else starting in fly ball? Go to a tournament. Go watch how it's all done. Know the rules. It's a big thing. It's The rules are very simple, but just know them. <laughs> you know when, when <laughs> you know what I mean. No, they are. Um, you know, and, and understand what you get into when you do get on a fly ball team. You you are committed to a team. Uh, you know, you're committed to help that team and do everything. Uh, you, you, a lot of people that especially start off with us. You know, we we tell them we we want you to come to a few tournaments first to understand what you are committing to to get yeah. into. You know. Um, no, you don't have to go to every tournament and stuff like that, but there is a commitment on training and working your dogs. I, I don't like dogs coming to tournaments that are out of shape or haven't been to practice because that doesn't affect us, the health of your dog for sure because you don't want them to get injured because they're not in shape to do it. Yeah. But, you know, it, it affects that your dog's now taking the place of a dog that has been training and working and coming out. So it's a, that you got to look at that commitment. If you want to do fly ball, you got to understand there is a commitment to it. Uh, build up on that commitment and understand it before you just jump into it get to know it first well put well put okay anything else from you no let's get back on the lane soon though <laughs> i hear you i hear you <laughs> that's all i want i you know get back out running uh, back in the day we used to do a tournament like i, I mean there's a dog walking behind me sir that's my old girl <laughs> um but yeah it's um you know get back let's get back out there do something with it i think we're gonna i, I don't know how we can do virtual fly ball on t uh, on <laughs> on camera and that though <laughs> but um i'd like to just get it back like i said i miss the people and seeing the people yeah. you know so many of my friends that i've met over the years are from fly ball and you know I, you, you want to see them again you can't see your neighbor right now so it's hard <laughs> yeah so hopefully all this stuff will be behind us soon and we can get out there and do stuff with it so 